now on video. The Great Noddy Video. Five new adventures with Noddy and all his friends in Toy Town. And nursery rhyme time. All the king's rhymes, they're gone. 60 favourite nursery rhymes that kids will love to sing along to. The wheels on the bus go round and round. And follow the story as Jack searches for the missing rhymes. Two great new children's videos from the BBC. It's best to keep it that way. He walks quietly around the snoring creature. Oh, uh, oh no, mosquitoes! Frantically, Jeremy tries to wave them away, but they keep on pestering him. Take that! And that! Oh, 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 missed! Millie and Tilly watch as Jeremy runs towards the dino monster waving his club. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Tilly? It seems Jeremy's killed a dino monster, Billy. Together they race out of the forest to tell their friend Obdorod. Obdorod cannot believe his ears. Jeremy? Kill the dino monster, indeed? What a brave chap. At that moment, Jeremy appears from the forest, exhausted from chasing mosquitoes. And when Obdorod sees the sleeping dino monster, he's convinced that the twins were telling the truth. The next day, Jeremy finds that crowds have gathered to cheer him wherever he goes. Being a friendly caveman, Harry Jeremy waves back. Morning, morning, how are you then? Morning, oh, nice to see you. Morning, oh, very nice, yes. Morning. Oh, is that for me? Oh, thank you very much. All hail, Harry Jeremy, slayer of the Dino Monster. And they unveil a huge statue of him. Jeremy realises that his friends believe he has killed a ferocious Dino Monster. And of course he hasn't. But it does seem a shame to waste a good statue. Jeremy's about to return to his cave when he sees Baby Dino painting his statue. Hey, what do you think you're doing, he shouts. In fact, he shouts so loudly that Baby Dino starts to cry and the crying wakes her mother up. Hey, stop that this minute. Of course, when the Dino Monster appears, everyone realizes that Jeremy isn't a hero at all and they pull down his statue. Ah! You're a fake, Jeremy, laughs Chucklesaurus. Quite, says Obdorod. Of anything, but he's hairy. 
scary. No, Harry. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway, and no all-seeing eye. He's just Harry. Harry. He's most definitely Harry. Harry. His name is Jeremy, and he's Harry. Harry. Unquestionably. Hmm. Everything is peaceful in the forest today. Too peaceful for Arabella. I'm bored, she sighs. And I've got nobody to play with. Harry Jeremy is not bored. There's nothing he likes more on a hot and peaceful day than to lie down and take a little nap. Harry Jeremy! Harry Jeremy, wake up, I want to play. But Jeremy goes on sleeping. Arabella has an idea. Jeremy hates to be woken from a nap, so he goes off to look for somewhere more peaceful, away from Arabella. But when Arabella wants to play, she can be very determined. Harry, Jeremy, please play with me. Tickle, tickle. <laughs> Jeremy finds a tall palm tree and settles down in its shade. Oh, perfect. Peace at last. Tickle, tickle! Whoa. Now will you let me get some sleep? But I want to play. Once again, Jeremy sets off to find somewhere quiet. Arabella follows. But I'm bored. Well, go and be bored somewhere else. We could play hide-and-seek, suggests Arabella. No! I'll hide and you come and look for me. No! I'll go and play by myself then, if you're going to be so mean. I know when I'm not wanted. Finally, Harry Jeremy settles down for his nap. But try as he may, he cannot get to sleep. Oh. I wonder where Arabella is. Perhaps I was a little mean, he thinks. As I'm awake now, I may as well look for her. Arabella! I didn't mean to shout at you. Where are you? Arabella! He asks the twins, Millie and Tilly, or um, is that Tilly and Millie? Here, have you seen Arabella? I think I've upset her. Ew, no, we haven't seen her, Jeremy. Oh, dear. I have upset her. Jeremy searches everywhere. Arabella! 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 It begins to get dark, and poor Jeremy's becoming increasingly worried. All the while, Arabella is watching him. She's having a great time, because she's got to play hide-and-seek after all. He's not a superhero, nor a poet, or a king. He doesn't drive a car or do much of anything, but he's hairy. Scary. No, hairy. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway, and no all-seeing eye. He's just hairy. Hairy. He's most definitely hairy. Hairy. His name is Jeremy, and he's hairy. Unquestionably. Hmm. It looks like a beautiful day today, so Jeremy decides to take a walk. Hmm. Fresh air. In through the nose, out through the mouth. The eggheads are out enjoying the sunshine too, munching on their favorite food. Hmm. Grass. Harry Jeremy, being a friendly caveman, wanders over to say good morning. 
But all he does is frighten them, and they scurry away into the bushes. That's strange, says Jeremy. Perhaps the puddle soup I had for breakfast has made my breath smell. Ah, there's Bernard. He always likes to have a chat. Hello, Bernard! Bernard runs away too. Poor Jeremy is puzzled. Millie and Tilly, or is that Tilly and Millie, are arguing over whose legs are longest. Morning, twins. Now this is becoming too much. Oh, my smell horrible, sighs Jeremy. Even the kite bird and his friend Arabella seem to be frightened of Jeremy. Ah! The dino monster! So that's the answer. All this time, the dino monster has been stood right behind him. No wonder everyone was so frightened. Well, at least it wasn't me they were running away from. Jeremy realizes that the dino monster is not very happy. What's the matter with him, I wonder? And why does he keep following me? Ah, the poor fella's got two fake. I may be able to help you there, dino monster. Soon Jeremy has all his friends helping to relieve Dino's toothache. Jeremy has given one end of a piece of rope to the eggheads, and Arabella is placing the other end around Dino's tooth. On the count of three, one, two, three, pull! They heave, and they heave, and they heave. Keep going, shouts Harry Jeremy. Suddenly the tooth, which is as big as a rock, pops out. Now Dino is in a much better mood. And as for the tooth, well, you could say it's a crown. <laughs> He's not a superhero, nor a poet, or a king. He doesn't drive a car or do much of anything, but he's hairy. So scary. No, hairy. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway, and no all-seeing eye. He's just hairy. Hairy. He's most definitely hairy. Hairy. His name is Jeremy, and he's hairy. Unquestionably. Hmm. Winter has settled over Jeremy's village. A carpet of crisp white snow covers the land, and it is very, very cold. Jeremy wants to go out, so he wraps himself up in his thickest, warmest clothes. Oh, lovely and snug. All of Jeremy's friends are out playing in the snow. Even the kite birds are skating on the ice. Jeremy sees that Chucklesaurus and the eggheads are up to something. As he gets closer, he sees that they've built a snowman that looks just like him, with a potato for a nose. Jeremy thinks this is very rude. Looks like you, Jeremy! Laughs Chucklesaurus. Jeremy's so angry that he storms off back to his cave. <laughs> Harry Jeremy decides to build a big, warm log fire. 
And it's not long before all of his friends come over to share its warmth. Including Chucklesaurus. You're not coming in here! Shouts Jeremy. Not after making fun of me! Poor Chucklesaurus is left out in the cold. During the night, more snow has fallen. And in the morning, Jeremy finds that his mischievous friend is frozen solid. Oh, Chucklesaurus! Oh, dear, what have I done? It's your fault, say Millie and Tilly. Yes, absolutely, says Obdorod. Jeremy is upset. He now wishes he had forgiven Chucklesaurus and allowed him to share the fire. Jeremy is so busy worrying that he doesn't notice the sun come out until he feels cold water around his toes. Jeremy is relieved. The sun has melted the snow and Chucklesaurus is back to his normal, irritating self. wants to miss such a grand spectacle. In no time, the ring is prepared and everyone waits for the big event. Welcome to the contest to find the heavyweight champion of the forest. In the red corner, we have Monty the Spikesaurus. And in the blue corner, dancing Theosaurus. The winner shall receive the golden crown. The fight begins, and the crowd cheer as first Monty, then Theo seem to have the upper hand. I wish I was a champion, says Harry Jeremy. Then everyone would cheer for me. You, a champion? Ha 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 Don't make me laugh, says Chuckasaurus. I could be a champion just like them. All I need is a chance, that's all. Oh, yes, I could, Jeremy replies. Just like them, I could bomb, duck, and shimmy. Then the two fighters fall into a heap. Exhausted from all their efforts, the fight is declared a draw. Looks like it's hard work being a champion, mutters Jeremy. Then he sees the winner's crown. Oh, look at that. I bet I'd look great as a champion. Jeremy makes sure no one's looking. I'll just try it on for size. Oh, Jeremy, sighs Arabella. You do look handsome. Like a proper champ. Proper champ, more like that. <laughs> Laughs Chucklesaurus. Jeremy pretends he is a true champion, which makes Chucklesaurus laugh all the more. 
I think you look very strong, says Arabella. <laughs> Jackasaurus can hardly breathe because he's laughing so much. You need your head examined! <laughs> or think it's you who needs his head examined, says Jeremy, enjoying the last laugh. He's not a superhero, nor a poet, or a king. He doesn't drive a car or do much of anything, but he's hairy. Scary? No, hairy. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway, and no all-seeing eye. He's just hairy. Hairy. He's most definitely hairy. Hairy. His name is Jeremy, and he's hairy. Unquestionably. Hmm. Today's the 1st of April. April Fool's Day. This makes Jeremy very nervous because, as you may imagine, April Fool's Day is Chucklesaurus's favorite day. Ah, gotcha! <gasps> no, sighs Jeremy. And there are still three hours left. Jeremy sees a juicy plum ripe for picking. Ah, got you again! Laughs Chucklesaurus. Jeremy decides that the only way to avoid any more practical jokes is to find somewhere nice and quiet and a long way from Chucklesaurus. So he climbs Greystone Mountain. Oh, patient lost. Oh, what a lovely view. Ah, April Fool! <laughs> I'll get my hands on that scaly earth. Jeremy's so angry he pushes Jackosaurus off the side of the mountain. Perhaps now at last I can get a little peace and quiet. Jeremy heads home for a nap. But just as he begins to doze, the twins arrive. Jeremy, Harry, Jeremy, Chucklesaurus is missing. We think he may be hurt. Jeremy feels guilty. Maybe he did overreact a little, and after all, Chucklesaurus is his friend. Oh, I suppose I'll better go and rescue him. So Jeremy picks up his climbing rope and heads for the long, steep climb up the mountain. <laughs> Harry Jeremy finally reaches the spot where he pushed Chucklesaurus over. Chucklesaurus! Ho, oh, Chucklesaurus! Grab the end of the rope! Maybe he's hurt and cannot reach it, says Squawk. <laughs> this is more fault he's down there. I suppose I'd better go and look. And with that, Jeremy lowers himself over the edge. Oh. He's not down here! Well, this is a mystery. The rope is lowered. And Jeremy is hauled back up the rock face. Jeremy is very glad that April Fool's Day only happens once a year.
not a superhero nor a poet or a king. He doesn't drive a car or do much of anything, but he's hairy. Scary? No, hairy. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway and no all-seeing eye. He's just hairy. Hairy. He's most definitely hairy. Hairy. His name is Jeremy, and he's hairy. Unquestionably. Hmm. Harry Jeremy has decided that he wants to be the ringmaster in his own circus. He's also decided that he wants the eggheads to be his star turn. The polite way would have been to ask them first, but Jeremy, impatient as ever, rounds them up with his net and rope. Yeah, this is gonna be great. Although the eggheads don't look that happy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Harry Jeremy's Big Top and to the highlight of this evening's entertainment. Ring the bells for the shells, those yokes with the jokes. The flying eggheads! Even Squawk's in on the act. What? A terrified trapeze without a safety net? What? At first, everything goes to plan. But then, Jeremy begins to get a little concerned. They're not supposed to do that! No! This isn't right at all! Meanwhile, Squawk introduces the next act. The eggheads start off their floor routine just as Jeremy had planned. But then, they begin to go faster and faster. In fact, they really begin to enjoy themselves. Oh, but this will never do. They're ruining my circus. The eggheads fly and swoop and dive and spin, much to the enjoyment of the crowd. Oh, what are they doing? Mutters Jeremy. He's beginning to regret forcing them to perform. Come down at once! Do you hear me? Come down at once! Even Squawk's worried. Calm down before you break something! But the eggheads ignore them and continue to do just as they please. Moans Jeremy. Oh, dead look. <gasps> oh dear. It had to happen. The eggheads were so busy having a good time, they forgot to look where they were going. More oh, big tops turned into a big flop. <laughs> all the way back down the mountain to fetch his wheelbarrow. Whatever it is he has seen has made him very excited. It's a huge pink egg. 
Jeremy knows he must keep it warm so that it will hatch. So he goes into his cave to find his thickest and warmest blanket. Oh, this will do nicely, he says. Jeremy and Arabella are curious to see what kind of chick will hatch from such a strange egg. Next morning, Jeremy's up early to see if his egg's hatched, but it's gone! Who stole my egg? Come and get it! Laughs Chucklesaurus. But before Jeremy reaches it, Chucklesaurus rolls it down the hill. Fortunately, Arabella catches it before it breaks. Jeremy and Chucklesaurus fight over who should have the egg, and poor Arabella has to curl herself around it to protect it. Arabella's fur is so warm that the large pink egg begins to hatch. Everybody gathers around to see what strange creature will emerge from the egg. Isn't this thrilling? Say the twins. It's a baby dinosaur. The poor creature begins to cry and call for its mother. In fact, the little dinosaur makes so much noise that first the kite birds, then Millie and Tilly, and the eggheads all leave to get away from the noise. Ha <laughs> ha! You're in trouble now! Laughs Chucklesaurus. Yes, I wouldn't like to be in your shoes, says Obdorod. This is all my fault, says Jeremy. But then he has an idea. He picks up the baby dinosaur and carries him into the forest. Oh, please stop crying! Please stop crying! Jeremy puts the baby dinosaur down and runs off to hide behind a nearby rock. In no time, the baby's mother arrives and carries her little baby home, and at last the little dinosaur stops crying. What a day, thinks Jeremy. Oh no, more eggs! Jeremy decides to leave them alone. He's had quite enough excitement for one day. He's not a superhero, nor a poet, or a king. He doesn't drive a car or do much of anything, but he's hairy. Scary? No, hairy. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway, and no all-seeing eye. He's just hairy. Hairy. He's most definitely hairy. Hairy. His name is Jeremy, and he's hairy. Unquestionably. Hmm. Harry Jeremy has a new hobby. He's taking photographs of all his friends. Today he's adding a picture of Millie, or is that Tilly, to his collection. Right a bit. Perfect smile now. He clicks the shutter. And in no time, he has a picture framed and ready to hang alongside those of his other friends. Then he notices that somebody's missing. Of course, it's Jeremy himself. Hmm. I must make myself look brave and fearless and, oh yeah, handsome for my photograph, he says. But once outside, he realizes that he has a problem. Who's going to take the picture? Now, Jeremy prides himself on having a solution to every problem, so he attaches a piece of string to his shutter and stands proudly before the camera. For over an hour, Jeremy poses in front of the camera until all his film is finished. He quickly develops the film, only to find out that none of the pictures have come out properly. Jeremy is undeterred. He's determined to have a picture of himself up on the wall alongside those of his friends. As usual, 
It's not long before he has an idea. Now that is clever. Harry Jeremy has painted a picture of himself onto a large piece of wood with a hole for him to poke his head through. Oh, George, come here. I want you to try something for me. Do me a favor, put your head through that hole there so that I can see if my new invention works. Finally, Jeremy is happy. He has one last look in the mirror and then prepares himself for the great moment. Whoa, I do look brave. Whoa, I'm very handsome, says Jeremy to his own picture. afternoon and Harry Jeremy is lying outside in the sun having a nap. Oh, oh, oh shit. And you should have seen it, Hopterot. This fish must have been six feet, no, no, seven feet long. It was a whopper. Would you two mind having your conversation outside someone else's cave? What's up with you, asks Hopterot. I'm trying to have a nap, Jeremy replies. <laughs> Harry Jeremy hates to be disturbed when he's trying to have a nap and settles down to sleep once more. But then he hears Arabella and Baby Dino playing and they're making an awful din. Do please be quiet. I'm trying to rest and I can't with you two making such a row. Who are you shouting at? Says Baby Dino's mother. Oh, oh no, no one, says Jeremy. I'll, I'll just be getting along then. Once again, Jeremy settles down for a nap. Oh, no. What now? It's Millie and Tilly. Or is that Tilly and Millie? Be quiet. Millie and Tilly do not like to be told when and where they can talk and tell Jeremy not to be so rude. Well, that's the last straw. Jeremy decides that the only way he's going to get any peace is to put on his dino blaster and listen to some cave music. Oh, that's more like it. But while Jeremy is listening to his dino blaster, his friends are watching Terry Dactyl practice his flying. Unfortunately, he's not very good at it yet. 
Arabella tries to warn Jeremy that Terry could crash at any moment, but Jeremy can't hear her. Poor Terry not only has a problem with flying, landing's not his strong point either. And somehow, I don't think Jeremy's going to be having his afternoon nap today. He's not a superhero, nor a poet, or a king. He doesn't drive a car or do much of anything, but he's hairy. Scary? No, hairy. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway, and no all-seeing eye. He's just hairy. Hairy. He's most definitely hairy. Hairy. His name is Jeremy, and he's hairy. Unquestionably. Hmm. There are three things that Harry Jeremy really likes. Food, flowers, and sleeping. One day, whilst taking a nap, Jeremy hears munching sounds coming from his kitchen. He looks through the window to find that somebody has eaten his apples. What a mystery. The next day, Jeremy's ready to have another nap. Only this time, he asks Arabella to guard his dinner. A lovely roast chicken. Well, no sooner had he closed his eyes when the munching sounds start again. This time, it's not just the food that's disappeared, but Arabella, too. Oh, no. Someone's eaten my dinner and Arabella. Suddenly, Jeremy realizes that it must have been the plant, and he's so upset that he throws it out of his house. Later that same day, Jeremy leaves a beautiful cake on his table. Ah! Oh. No! Not again! He sees Arabella and realizes that it was she who's been stealing his food. He's so angry that he throws her out of his house. And don't come back! He shouts. But I didn't do anything, she replies. It was your plant. Harry Jeremy doesn't believe her, and poor Arabella slides off very upset that Jeremy could think she might steal from him. See, Jeremy, it was your plant, not me. The next morning, Jeremy wakes up to find all of his friends gathered outside. Oh, this is nice. He thinks, or oh, must be very popular. But they haven't come to see him. They've come to look at his plant. See, it was your plant, Jeremy. It's been eating your food and has grown and grown, says Arabella. Jeremy has to say sorry for being so mean to her. But he does like his beautiful new plant. And it looks as though the plant likes him, too.
He's not a superhero, nor a poet, or a king. He doesn't drive a car or do much of anything, but he's hairy. Scary? No, hairy. He has no superpowers, and I've never seen him fly. No secret hideaway, and no all-seeing eye. He's just hairy. Hairy. He's most definitely hairy. Hairy. His name is Jeremy, and he's hairy. Unquestionably. Hmm. This is Harry Jeremy's telescope. Through it, he can see for miles and miles. Oh, I wish I could travel to far off places. He sighs. I'm fed up with the same old people and the same old village. Slowly, an idea begins to take shape in Harry Jeremy's head. Jeremy calls all the eggheads together to explain to them his new idea. He tells them that with a lot of effort, hard work and determination, it will be possible for everyone in the village to travel to faraway places. The eggheads are very keen to help Jeremy and immediately set to work putting Jeremy's plan into action. First of all, they have to gather together all the bits and pieces they're going to need. It looks as though this is going to be a very big construction job. It appears that all of the hard work, effort and determination is coming from the eggheads and not from Harry Jeremy. In fact, watching the eggheads work so hard makes Jeremy feel quite tired. While he sleeps, the eggheads finish Jeremy's master plan. It's an enormous motorway. Jeremy decides that the road looks perfect until... Everybody in the village seems to be using his new road. <gasps> the noise! moans Jeremy. And the dust they're kicking up. And right outside his house, too. <coughs> this has got to stop. <gasps> Jeremy wheezes in between coughs. He blows his whistle to stop the traffic. Phew. Who needs to travel anyway? 